Dear colleagues, my name is Karel Slavíček and on my behalf and behalf of my colleague I'd like to tell you about one part of our ongoing research which concerns experimental ceramic production. The part which I will speak of in the next few minutes is called the beginnings of potter's wheel in medieval Bohemian Moravian highlands in Czech Republic. Beginnings of the medieval pottery research in the Czech Republic dates back to the 60s of the 20th century. At that time, the medieval archaeology as a research field was established. Ceramic technology was rarely the topic of interest until the 90s. The calls can be seen in isolation towards the western countries until the fall of the eastern bloc. Incorporation of experimental archaeology has boomed in the new millennia. The area of interest is the Bohemian Moravian Highlands territory which is located in the middle of the Czech Republic. The region was a border between two historical lands, Bohemia and Moravia. Until the beginning of the 13th century, it was all covered in woods, possible thanks to a few trade routes only with sparse settlements. At that time, its colonization has begun. Newcomers from Czech and German speaking lands not only established villages, they also carried new technologies. The potter's wheel was one of them. Archaeologists distinguish pottery of the 13th century to a so-called traditional pottery and colonization-impacted pottery. The traditional pottery originates in terms of technology, morphology and decoration in early medieval pottery. Most usual ceramic shapes are pots, bowls and storage pots. Colonization brings variability to a ceramic morphology. Even though pots remain the most abundant shape, the new types appear – pots with handle, jugs, bottles, beakers, lids, tripods, pans and lamps. The dynamic times of colonization also brings changes in pottery technology. The abundance of pottery with graphite decreases and is substituted with sand and mica tempered pottery. Besides coiling, the wheel thrown pottery appears and becomes dominant by the late 13th century. Most of the 13th century pots were fired in completely reducing atmosphere. Some pots can show an oxidized surface layer. The same applies to pots fired in kilns, which appear in archaeological record in the second half of the 13th century. Hard-fired black surface pottery starts to appear by the end of the 13th century. All medieval kilns excavated in the region were dated to the second half of the 13th century. The kilns are of two types. Simple chamber kiln with temporary or permanent dome and the updraught kiln with two flue channels. Archaeological pottery research in the region is supplemented with experiments since 2013. The experiment goals are finding a source of raw materials the way of their treatment and testing various forming techniques to imitate the matching traces which can be observed on pottery. The last part of the experiment is pottery firings, which focuses on producing black surface pottery, pottery with, with black cores and pottery fired in completely reducing atmosphere. Another goal is a redefinition of paradigms about medieval pottery forming in Czech archaeological literature. The northern half of the Bohemian Moravian highlands lacks finer and better quality clay deposits. The bedrock of the region is mostly formed by metamorphic and magmatic rocks. The prevalent genetic clay type is diluvial. The lack of loess is due to geomorphology. The search for raw materials consists of geological and historical map study, surface scanning and field prospection. Part of the research was historical clay mines documentation. Field collected clay samples were analyzed by various methods. Differential scanning calorimetry measures the difference in the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a sample. The heat flow curve shows exothermic and endothermic reactions which represent organic burnout loss of physically bound water and dehydroxylation of clay minerals. 
The method can be used for quantification of some of the clay minerals. Another method allowing clay mineral quantification is X-ray diffraction. The total amount of clay minerals never exceeded 40%. The most abundant mineral was quartz. All analyzed samples qualified as suitable for earthenware pottery and bricks making. The quality is however not sufficient for more advanced ceramics. Such clays in raw form need complicated processing. Experiments shown that some clays took several years before they became applicable. Processing methods used come from modern age potter's traditions. The methods were applied in order to change clay properties so it resembles medieval ceramics in terms of granularity and tempering. Thorough ceramics analysis of formation traces on archaeological material preceded experiments with forming. In the Czech literature, each trace is usually attributed to either coiling or wheel throwing. The 13th century ceramics, however, show variable mixture of formation traces. For example, some bottoms have unambiguous traces, such as partial fixing to the potter's wheel on its edge or wheel plate imprint. The breakthrough in the 13th century was potter's wheel import. The experiment uses various types of kick wheels, including replaceable wooden plates with engraved marks. Pottery in the 13th century combines three main forming techniques. The former one is coiling. The new important technique is wheel throwing. There is, however, also the third one called wheel forming, which combines coiling and rotational kinetic energy of the wheel. This technique seems more to be a combination of various practices incorporating the fast wheel. The biggest task in the experiment of pot forming appeared to be using the low quality raw clays with low formability. It took four years of seasoning for some of them before they could be used for wheel forming and one more year until they were applicable for wheel throwing. The research of transitional techniques combining coiling and wheel throwing is still in its first phase. New results are to be expected by the next year. Ceramic firing is another part of the experiment. All firings were documented with 1 to 4 thermocouples and optical thermometer. Each firing included a series of testing clay samples. In the phase of testing, we have conducted many ways of primitive firings, such as open fire, pit fire and bonfire. All mentioned methods are of short duration and limited possibilities of control of the firing process. Historical kiln replicas were also used. The main type used is the updraught kiln with two fuel boxes, which was excavated in the city of Ihlava. This kind of kiln was tested in three constructional varieties of the above ground structure with capacity from 70 to 200 pots. The kiln was used to test various strategies of wood fire adding while producing black surface pottery. Firing results show features similar to the 13th century pottery namely black cores with oxidizing surface layer. This feature implies low maximum temperature, short-lasting firing with cooling down in oxidizing atmosphere. Black cores are produced by organic content in clay. This firing is very economical regarding fuel consumption and can be used for clays with low clay mineral content with coarse grain sand. Such pots can endure thermal shocks during uncontrolled firing. Fully reducing firing is one of the least clarified firing method. It can be achieved by slow fuel burnout without exposing pots to oxygen. This method is complicated in reaching temperatures high enough for clay to sinter. Another way could be use of short firing with final reducing phase. The most successful method in terms of testing and research is black surface pottery production. It was produced in the region from the 14th century until the beginning of the 20th century. The subject of research 
was not only the method of achieving black pottery itself, but also the ability of various clays to absorb carbon into pot's surface at the final firing phase and wood fire influence for a smoked shade of pots. The experiment was aimed to imitate the 13th century pottery with all documented technological traces. Revision of the Czech paradigm of pottery sorting strictly between coiling and wheel throwing has shown there was a variety of transitional forming techniques behind the method called wheel forming. Their origin is probably to be found in low quality of local clay sources, which was an obstacle for the implementation of the new technology brought by colonizers, the kick wheel. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found the presentation inspiring. At last but not least, I'd like to invite you to a workshop which we hold once a year, which is partly a conference, partly a set of ceramic experiments, including various firings. Email me or my colleague for more information. We are always happy to meet more ceramic enthusiasts.